Last part, real quick, you guys all know cash buy, cash out, cash is king. I'm gonna go over this pretty quick, but like I said, some of these are just to remind you. I think the uh, 18th century author, what Samuel Johnson stated, people need to be reminded more than they need to be instructed. So a couple things on cash out, cash, um, cash buy, cash out, refinance, <laughs> and that's kind of what I call it because it's just a strategy. It's a strategy to have people pay cash for a home lined up with a refinance right afterwards to recoup their, uh, recoup their down payment funds, recoup their cash funds. And uh, benefits, obviously, quicker close and uh, non-contingent offers. And that's what you guys want. You know, cash is king, you want a non-contingent offer. Most people, and I've talked to that I've sold this to, at first said, I don't have the money. And it's like, okay, do you, have, do you have retirement accounts? Do you have investments? Do you have parents? This is short-term use of a large sum of money usually for these people. So um, just looking at it, current liquid assets, that's great if you've got, you know, buying a $300,000 house and just have that laying around in your checking account. Uh, however, if, if you're in a bid, and this was probably more six months ago than it is today, if you're in a bidding situation, cash is king, uh, the bidding situations have gone, you know, the competition for those listings has gone down a little bit, but this still may be something to think about and bring top of mind. Investment accounts, retirement accounts, IRAs, you can uh, borrow against your IRAs for 60 days as long as you repay it, there's no penalty on it. So that's a great benefit and I've done those. I've done margin accounts for investments. Um, borrowed against those, they borrowed against paid cash because they're in a competitive offer and we did a cash out refinance afterwards. Um, also gifted funds relatives, I've done these all day long. Mom and dad have the money, mom and dad buy the house, they either sell it to the kids or they give the kids the cash as a gift to buy the home and the kids refinance. And then we can go normally um, or you want to refinance your house and have the cash ready to pay cash for a new home, you could certainly do that. Blanket loan would uh, do the same thing. So there is one more there. So qualifying information, qualify with most, uh, just any product essentially when you're doing a cash out refinance. You can do a uh, fixed or an arm product, uh, you can do FHA. VA requires six months before you can do a refinance. That is a VA requirement, six payments, I'm sorry six payments before you can do a VA refinance. So just be aware of that with your veterans. But they can go up to 100% financing. Uh, normal, normal cash out is 80% on most of the products. So if they, you know, obviously buy a house for 500, they can pull 400 out of that, just 80%. So it's 20% down, keeps them out of PMI anyways. Um, and here's one of the big things that we like to do. I can start the refinance prior to the purchase of the home. So they get a contract on the home. We know we're doing a cash buy, cash out refinance. We get the refinance rolling prior to uh, the, uh, the actual closing on the home. <coughs> now, a couple things. I've got to do the appraisal post-closing because you can't tell the seller we want to do an appraisal on the home before yeah, they're gonna go, what, what's going on here? So we do the appraisal right after closing, day after closing, or whatever that occupancy is, we get an appraiser in there so that we can get this closed and get them their cash out ASAP. Um, and we can even have it underwritten. If there's a problem with it, I normally don't under, send it to an underwriter, but if it's iffy or if there's issues with it, we'll send it up to underwriting. Uh, and then that way we can close quickly after the, uh, after the uh, home is closed, the purchase is done. Uh, that is it for me. It is 1240. Uh, what questions do you have? I am open for questions. And anyone? Mark, Randy Bird. Uh, hey, Randy. So you got 10 units, 10 rental properties. You got them all in your blanket. Okay. okay. And you decide it's hot market to sell one of those rentals. If, I mean, there's one more. Did you readjust that blanket loan? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the proceeds from the sale of the uh, uh, property that's sold, there's a partial release done, and it's uh, <clears throat> part of those proceeds are required to go towards the blanket loan to maintain the 80%. Okay. 
So it is a partial release. Hey, real quick, a couple things on a blanket loan uh, that you need to be aware of. There is a three day right of rescission if they live in the current residence, just like refinancing. There's the government requires a three day right of rescission. So if they're owner occupying the current home, nobody walks away from the closing with a check. It's three days, so if you close on a Monday, uh, checks are cut on the Friday and dispersed on a Friday. So want to make sure the listing agent knows that when you're going into a blanket loan. I try to send an email out to both agents and everybody involved with the three day right of rescission, um, but you want to make sure that's part of it. So, and then that partial release, if you're normally you cannot close the, the sale of the uh, current residence for at least two and a half weeks because we don't even have a loan set up. And that loan may not be recorded for about a month or so. So the buyers need to be aware, they need to tell the title company they've got to get a payoff of a new loan because the previous mortgage was paid off with a blanket loan and Union Savings Bank now has a uh, mortgage in recording with a county that hasn't hit the record yet that's there in place. You don't want, I, I've gotten called, Mark, I, I got 400,000 out of my home. Well, they got the full proceeds because there was no mortgage shown. It was paid off from their previous lender and the blanket loan was not recorded yet. So it takes a little bit of time for that blanket loan to go through the recording process and COVID totally slowed that up. Um, so just be aware of that. All right, what other questions do you have? There was one back there. On the cash out? Yes. And then to do the refi, what percent increase is the interest rate? Um, that's a great question. Now, if you're going with a fixed rate, <coughs> normally it's not an increase in the interest rate, but Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac charge uh, an adjustment to discount points for cash out refinance. So it is geared upon loan to value only on fixed rate mortgages, loan to value and credit score. Uh, if you were to refinance in, you wouldn't refinance a blanket loan into a variable rate because you'd already have it and we would just modify everything. So there is small adjustments. Give an example, if you go 75% um, loan to value with a 740 credit score, I think it's three eighths of a discount point, less than one point. All the way up, 80% actually is 1.125 points with good credit, then it drops there uh, down. So I'll review that. So that's in addition to the uh, 450 closing costs. So just be aware of that. And everything in our business is geared on uh, loan to value and purpose, cash out, owner occupied, non-owner occupied, and credit scoring. So that uh, you are the 4.5% subject to your credit rating? No, actually with these portfolio loans, we do not gear anything towards credit scoring. So if you've got somebody with a 680 credit score, they're gonna get the same 4.5% with no points as you would with somebody with, you know, a 800 credit score. So that's a blessing. Now the underwriting, obviously, if they've got some credit issues is, is going to be looked at. So it doesn't mean anybody with any credit score qualifies. What do you mean by underwriting? Uh, the approval process. The, lo the lady in our office that looks at it and says, we're good to go with this or we, it's a no go. So normally we don't get the no-go. Uh, I try to weed those out in advance. So if I get somebody pre-qualified and pre-qualification is obviously a uh, important step in any of these. I get them pre-qualified for a blanket loan, send it over. Tammy, I send you pre-qualifications for blanket loans all the time. Uh, and that means they're good to go non-contingent. It'll say it right on that pre-qualification letter. Um, and they're good to go. If I have any questions because of qualifying, which I, we have all the time on, on certain products, I take them downstairs. I have my underwriter um, for most of my loans in Far Hills. So I have my processing, my assistants there, and processor um, underwriting closing is in our Far, Far Hills office. So I have that staff available to me at Union right there in the office that I can go talk to and, and say, hey, can we get this done? How long is the process, um, because if you're on a new build, how long can they stay in their current residence before they do the blanket? 
If, in other words, they do the blanket. Okay. How long before that? 30 concept? years. Literally 30 okay. years. Okay. Yeah, if they're doing it owner occupied, that's one thing. If they're, if they're doing investment properties, we got to price it a little bit differently. Right. But yeah, 30 years. It's a 30 year term. It'll stay fixed for five years, but or one year or three year, whatever they want to do as far as a blanket loan. So, yeah, so you're older adults with all that clutter and they can take, and I know you don't want to wait that long to get that home listed because you want to put it in your actives, but it does give them, you can urge them once they close, okay, be out of there in a week, but it does give them that transition time into the new home. That's really important for older Americans, so older adults. Yeah, that's what I'm dealing with all yeah. the Yeah, they can, especially if they've got not only all that clutter, they've got those heart chains and, hey, don't worry about it, we'll get you over there. Yeah. So, and you know, if eventually they say, hey, I want to stay in my current home, they could do that, sell the other one, just pay their current home down. So, okay. there, there's no occupancy requirement on a new one. We just, if they're planning on doing that, that's great. It's a portfolio loan. These are looked at, we do a lot of portfolio lending. The, the availability of what we can do that we keep in house at Union Savings Bank and don't have to sell, a lot of lenders sell their loans. Um, we sell our fixed rates to Freddie Mac normally, and we do VA and FHA. Those are all uh, sold. We, we service our own fixed rate loans, but we keep portfolio loans in-house, and we service those in-house. And so we're a lot more flexible. And I know the people that actually, you know, if it goes up the chain, I talked to the woman that makes the ultimate decision in uh, Cincinnati this morning called me. And it, it, it's that she, she has the wherewithal to say, we like it, we don't like it. So, if you've got something really out of the box you want to talk to me about, we can do that. Non-conforming properties, commercial properties, mixed-use properties, that's great. We do look at uh, commercial properties, look at the collateral very closely. So that has to be approved, whereas residential not as tightly as long as it's in decent condition. All right. But all that, I know when I bought that commercial building, I defended it. They were only wanting to give me a five-year rate, you know, takes for five years, and they could adjust. Yeah. But they ended up talking to me to ten years, so but I ended up getting a ten-year. So in your portfolios, for example, if I wanted to refinance this commercial building, it'd be <coughs> stay on your portfolio, right? You yeah. Shop, yeah. It, it, shop it like you say, shop. Right. Yeah, yeah. So in our fixed five-year fixed uh, to, to what you may be looking at, it'll stay fixed for five years. You can negotiate another five-year fixed period at the end of the five-year. We'll modify it to whatever the market is. We usually give you a pretty good rate. So you don't have to go with a one-year arm at that time. You can request another five-year. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you, Jerry and Julie. Uh, Chris, and she's not around, but uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. 